Okay, we've done our patch pocket. Now we're going to do this little welt pocket here. As you can see. There we go. Yeah, alright. We've got our back short. So this is our right back uh, leg. And the pieces that we need to do our pocket are the actual pocket welt itself, um, the, the lining piece, mm -hmm. and our pocket facing. Mm -hmm. Okay, but before we can um, start sewing that, we need to sew our dart. So again, we fold, uh, fold to match up the notches mm -hmm. at the top and the drill hole down the bottom. And if you're having trouble sewing darts, I'll just show you this technique, which works out quite well. Um, you just start off by pulling pulling the thread a lot, you know, longer than the actual dart itself, and then just holding that towards the back. And then you start at the notch and do a back tack. And then you get the thread and you hold it down in line with the drill hole, or you like so that it you know touches one centimeter past. And then you can actually use the thread as a guide. And when you get down to the bottom, make sure that you do like, go past the drill hole. And then sometimes the thread actually gets caught in here, but you can trim it out. But I've been lucky I haven't gone right on top of it. So I can just I can just snip that off and I've got a nicely sewn dart. Okay, so I'm just going to give this a press and uh, I'm going to apply some interfacing here just to support the pocket as well. Back at the iron here so we've taken we've got the um the dart done we're just going to press the dart again towards the center back and i showed you how to do this before but um the dart i mean but we're also here to um, iron on some interfacing so i've got this piece of interfacing and this interfacing is the same size as the actual welt piece that we'll be using so through the interfacing you can see the drill hole there and we'll go about one and a half centimeters past at each side so we're just going to trim this back a little bit here so just like taking a centimeter off um, and this is just going to help support the pocket when we're when we're sewing the pocket so we just need to um, fuse this in place and it should take about um like eight to ten seconds <laughs> and you don't use steam and no steam, no, don't need any steam. Okay, so now we'll get back to the machine. Okay. So we've got our, I've just put pins in where the drill holes are, and this is our, the welt piece that we're going to sew. So we just need to fold this in half, and you can run it along the board here as well just to hold that in shape now we're going to the the, the drill holes are important because obviously the the um the welt bit is is much longer than it needs to be because we need some seam allowance there as well so we're actually going to start sewing uh, but so the drill holes are covered we're going to start sewing a half a centimeter before the drill hole and a half centimeter past the drill hole at the end so you can just put Yep, so just do it a, a, a foot width from um, from the edge, so the, the edge of the foot on the on the raw edge there. And where did you put the needle down? And the needle came, was half a centimetre yep. back the, from yep. the drill hole. So do so back tack at the end there. Oops, it's going to be caught. And down. So there's my um, welt stitched in place there. Now I also need the lining. So the lining needs to go here. Okay, so even though we can see, we can actually see the black stitching through the lining, you won't be able to because you'll be doing yours in a matching color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin um, each end here and then I'm going to flip the piece over and using your original row of stitching as a guide and checking that the raw edges of the lining are still matched up with the raw edges mm -hmm. of the of the the welt i'm just going to stitch over that line just to hold just to hold the lining in place and you can see i've stitched that there 
Okay. Now on the top side, we need our um, our our facing. So what happens here is we actually line the on your your facing piece. You have a notch on either side, and you line the notch up with that raw edge of the welt and the lining. Okay, so line that up there. And again, we're going to pin this on each end before we flip it over. So it's held in place, we're gonna flip it over. And now our, our welt is actually 12, like the finished the finish size of our welt is going to be 12 mil. So we need to sew 12 mil away from this original row of stitching and it has to be in line as well. Okay, so because you've got the um, the interfacing there, you could actually, you could draw on it with pencil if you were a bit worried about not getting it right because it'll be covered up eventually. Um, but I'm just going to use my, um, use my tape measure and knowing that um, the, oops, that pin's in the way there. Um, knowing that the a, a 12 mil is half an inch, so that's something easy to look at. So half an inch on there. So I put that down where I want it, do a back tap to secure it, and then just run this along so it stays nice and even. And we're going to obviously finish at the other end here. Okay, so 12 mil gap all the way along, nice and even. Okay, so now we're going to flip to the right, oops, flip to the right side again. And what we're going to do now is we actually need to cut a hole because all of this needs to go through to the the inside of the um, of the, the piece. Through the center. So through the center, so in line with the raw edge of the of the lining and the welt. And when you get to the end, you can see the drill hole there. When you get to the end, don't go too don't go too close, like about a centimeter and a half from the end. We're going to cut up, and we're actually going to cut a uh, trim all the way to where where that stitching finished. Okay, on both sides. So if you need to pull that back, so you've got a really definite corner to look at, you can do that. And flip it around. And I'll go down the other direction. If you've got a pair of scissors that have a real, like, can get into a really sharp end point, you can use those as well. But a lot of scissors, they they don't get right to the end, so it's a little bit tricky to do. Mm. Okay, so to there. Make sure you don't trim past this, otherwise you'll end up with a hole in the, on the outside. Mm. Okay, so now we've done that, we need to push all the layers through to the other side. So we've got the facing going through, make sure the pocket goes through, I mean sorry, the welt. So this does take a little bit of shuffling around to get everything in place. And you can see there, it's very important that, that this lines up. So, so the edge of the welt lines up with the, the top edge there. Mm. Okay. Okay, so we're going to um, to help to help hold this in place before we uh, finish the inside of the pocket. We're going to we're going to do some stitching around here. So to start with, we're going to um, just a stitch along the top edge here. Uh, yes. So we're going to start here at the bottom. This bottom corner. Close to the edge, and the good thing about this too is that we don't um, we don't have to worry about stitching this underneath, which you do on a lot of on a lot of, a lot of these types of pockets. 
So because we're top stitching it, it's much, much easier to um to get it right. Mm. And then down this side, just put it on the corner. Okay, so those three sides. Now the reason we haven't stitched across here is because if we stitched across here, we'd actually seal the pocket closed because we need to get our hand in there. So the way that we go across the bottom there, we actually need to lift uh, this, lift the facing out of the way. Okay, so pull that back out of the way and then flip it over again and you'll see that you know, by sewing across here now, because we've got the facing out of the way, we're not going to sew our pocket closed. And we're just going to sew across the bottom here. Okay, so we've got a stitching all the way around. And again, this is in black, so it's really quite obvious. You'd have it in you know, matching color, so it wouldn't be as bad. Okay, so now on the inside, we have, like, because I put my hand in the pocket and it comes mm. out here. So now to close the pocket, we just need to lift this up here and sew this, and that will actually help us create our pocket bag. So we just sew across here that one centimeter. Okay, and I'm going to uh, now I'm going to overlock along here. Um, and then I'm going to stitch uh, stitch up the sides as well. So I'll just overlock this and then come back. Yes. So I've just overlocked along that seam there. So you'll see that when I flip it to the inside, you've got, when you open the pocket, you've got a facing and you can put your hand in there. So now I just need to sew up the sides. So it's easier if you're sewing up the sides just to flip this back. So we're going to have a one centimeter seam so we'll sew from here just down to the end there we don't need to sew up there because it's, it's only one layer of fabric so we'll just start the sewing here okay and on this side we'll actually start at the bottom and go up here so just give it a little bit of a pull to make sure it's nice and secure and that you don't end up with like you know mm -hmm. extra fullness there Okay, so that's down both sides. Now the last thing, or two more things we have to do, we have to overlock up both sides, and then obviously we have to trim the top. So I'll just overlock that and come back to you. Okay, so I've overlocked down both sides here with the, the, the it going under the foot this way, so the nice overlocking or the top overlocking is showing. And trim off these here with the bottom bit, because I did before with the bottom of the fly. If you trim it to within like one and a half centimeters, and then just give it a pull that will actually just tighten the end up there so it doesn't come unloose and Un unloose undone speak english man. all right so that's just secured a little bit there all right so now we have this edge along the top which we have to trim off but we also need that to be get sewn into the waistband so we're just going to run a row of stitching so i'm going to run the the foot along the raw edge there all the way along and then I'll just be able to trim this off here and now one last thing I promise the last thing we have to do here is oops trim that off there um, we're just going to put a stitch through here so that the pocket so that the pocket doesn't like it doesn't droop down mm -hmm. so what the way that you do this is literally just to lift this up and you do need to change so change the the setting on here take it up to a five so the biggest stitch length and then we're just going to run a couple of stitches along here we're not back tacking so we're not back tacking and we don't we didn't take it all the way across it's just that one section there and that will actually hold the pocket closed so you can't get your hand in there but it's easy you can see the threads there are easy so they'll be easy enough to pull out so that um, so that it, that it doesn't droop down when it's on the hanger for a little while in store. Okay, and I'll just trim up this and then this is finished. Alright, we're just going to do the little zigzag 
on the edge of the welt box the, for reinforcing. Yes, which I forgot to do before, so which I forgot to mention before, I mean. Um, so on the machine, we've got the zigzag set on two, and we've got the, um, the, the stitch length, which is the satin stitch, so the, um, that's the, how close together the stitches are. That's on about half, mm -hmm. up to one. So when we put it on, we just need to get it straight. So it'll actually go right over the edge. So if you have the, the center of the foot lined up with the row of I stitching you put foot there. Yeah. Cool. Oh, that's really small. So that yeah, so the center of the the foot, the line on the mm -hmm. foot, lined up with the row of stitching there, and we want to start where this row of stitching is at the top. So that's where we'll start. So just um, we go, and then if you want to do um, a back tack, it's the lever um, here. If you can show that color. Oh yeah. It's actually this is the back tack here by lifting that up. So we'll do a little back tack. At the beginning. And then we're going to go down with our satin stitch all the way till we hit the, that bottom row of stitching. If we hit that level, then we'll do a back tack there as well. Okay, now this doesn't have an auto cut off. I know because I have this machine at home. <laughs> <laughs> Very old version. <laughs> and um, and it, like you can see, there's a little gap. This would this would actually be done with a bar tack machine in a factory, mm. but this is as close as we've got. So um, yeah, again, and if that was in the matching thread, it wouldn't it look, wouldn't look quite so gappy. Okay, so on the other side, so we're going to start at that first row of stitching. We're going to line the middle up with the row of top stitching there. I forgot to do a back tack, so remember to do a back tack when you start as well. Oops. Cool, and so then you've got support for both ends of the pocket. Great. Much more support. Okay, done. Thanks, Mark.